Unlock a world of wonder and imagination beyond all belief. Never before seen attractions to entrance the mind and dazzle the senses. No expenses spared. Welcome to Jurassic Park. Jurassic World. Huh? Yeah. Jurassic World. Jurassic, is that like a second one? Come on, man, that, that opening was crisp. Ah, jeez, I don't give a shit. We're using it anyway. This is Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Welcome back. And for those expecting a Johnny English review, you should really be asking yourself why. Today we're laying down odds for the fifth installment of the Jurassic Park franchise. So let's go over what we already know. In 1990, Universal and Steven Spielberg took a chance on a film about a zoo with dinosaurs that were brought back to life by using blood from fossilized prehistoric mosquitoes. This film was called Jurassic Park, based on the best-selling novel of the same name. The film was a blockbuster hit. Adults and children alike flocked into theaters in record numbers, ultimately making Jurassic Park the 17th highest grossing film of all time. The film combined an interesting and adequately complex storyline with interesting and adequately complex characters. I use the term adequately because the dinosaurs were the main characters, and no human actor really outshined them. Maybe except for this guy. Dodson! Dodson! We've got Dodson here! Nobody cares. Nice hat. The dinosaur characters were used in such a way that even when not on the screen, their presence loomed over the entire story. Uh, now, now eventually you do plan to have dinosaurs on your, on your dinosaur tour, right? Hello? Uh, hello? Don't get me wrong, Jeff Goldblum was great, but when you're 10 years old, you just want his weird ass to shut the hell up and show some more scary dinosaurs. You didn't really get the dinosaurs right off the bat, and in a way, this film kind of taught patience more than anything else. That is without a doubt the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Two sequels followed, The Lost World Jurassic Park and Jurassic Park 3. The former based on the second Michael Crichton novel by the same name, and the latter a ridiculous trope that would seriously make you consider listening to audiobooks. While both were lackluster in comparison with the first film, they are both fairly watchable due to the fact that they have dinosaurs in them. Think about it this way. Close your eyes and think of the worst movie you've ever seen. Now put a dinosaur in that bitch. You know you're gonna watch it. Fast forward about 15 years and enter Jurassic World. Now if 1990 was the point to exercise patience, it's safe to say that this dinosaur film safely meets the cultural standard for now. More. So this is you, and these guys here are dinosaurs. I'm not saying this is a bad thing. I'm not some old geezer yelling about how in my day we only had seven species of dinosaur in our dinosaur zoo and that's where we liked it. Upping the ante isn't a bad thing as long as you don't scare off the fish. In this case, Jurassic World didn't necessarily up the ante as much as it decided it didn't want to play anymore and then flipped over the table and walked away. The overall tone of the films went from Dinosaur Zoo, that sounds pretty dangerous, maybe not, to Dinosaur Zoo, hells to the yeah, can I bring the kids? Which also, by the way, is a pretty good litmus test on whether or not you're a responsible adult. You say yes to a trip to a zoo where previously extinct hyper predators can jump over an electrified fence at any time, swoop their beaks into your chest cavity and eat your heart while you're watching. You may want to check out your financial records because you probably spent all your money on Clash Royale credits and Pez. So I went over pretty much every trailer in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom and personally after reviewing them, I'm pretty confident that I saw at least three quarters of the movie. We know how it starts, the island is about to be destroyed by a volcano or whatever. A government tribunal is held to see whether or not the animals will be rescued. I'm willing to bet their answer is no, it's two to one on that. Then a private sector billionaire, let's say this guy here, steps up and says he wants to rescue the dinosaurs. Needing someone who knows the island, he recruits Chris Pratt's character, Owen Grady. Presumably due to his ability to talk to velociraptors. Also tagging along is Bryce Dallas Howard reprising her role as Claire Deering. Presumably because she has a three film contract with NBC Universal. I can't really see any other reason why. Justice Smith from the Netflix series The Beatdown rounds out the merry band, most likely because he's the closest you can get to bringing a kid on this trip without looking super irresponsible. There's always a freaking kid. They're all joined by some type of heavily armed strike team that after a while shows that they're not there to rescue the animals as much as they're there to capture them and sell them on the black market. Which I think is a cool twist and probably quite lucrative. It also seems that they're not only selling the existing animals, they're making new ones that are more intelligent and ferocious than before. Naturally, this one breaks loose and runs amok and kills everyone. Also naturally, it's up to Dino Lord and his pet Raptor Blue to stop them. Be careful, there's dinosaurs everywhere and they're flipping out and killing people. Some side action on this one, these two are no longer together, which makes a boatload of sense. If you go through what they went through in the first one, you don't necessarily want to keep seeing that person again. You're at like a dinner party and someone asks how you guys fell in love. You reply with funny story, it's the same day my sister got eaten by the giant prehistoric crocodile. It's a bad look. Even Money says they're all over each other by the end of this film. Like going through the trailers, she's like kind of the tin man in the last one and now she like finds a heart, she cares about the dinosaurs. 
that being said, I'm willing to drop two to one odds that says this one is a cliffhanger and picks up in another installment. Most likely the animals make the mainland and start killing people like hotcakes. This ominous statement here will prove to be prophetic. These creatures were here before us. And if we're not careful, they're gonna be here after. They already destroyed the island, the park is gone. Feels like the crisis might turn into a two-parter. Wrapping up runaway dinosaurs, wiping out wide swaths of humanity is not an easy thing to do in a tight 190 minutes. You gotta romance the carnage a little bit, let the story do its thing. Why not let this spill over into another one? 5 to 1 says we're looking at a near Planet of the Apes kind of situation here, but with dinosaurs. A lot of the premise behind Jurassic Park is to show what happens when man plays God. The whole park is a small scale example of what could happen when man acts with no regard for the consequences of their actions. Or even the notion that just because you can do something doesn't really mean you should. Jurassic World plays off those same ideas, but much like any other sequel or reboot, it is on a much larger scale. The consequences have to be larger, but in this case, the question of should we have done this is replaced with what should we do now? The idea that there are killer dinosaurs in this world is replaced by a dinosaurs or people too kind of a vibe, and personally, I'm not sure how far I'd want to go with that. Cause this right here, is fucking frightening. And while it's not the Mosasaurus' fault that he's alive, it's also not this surfer's fault. Over under on this one is $110 billion with a B. And it's gonna break right through that. I'm calling over. It's director Jay, Biona's first franchise nod, and he likes to make things suspenseful. I love playing with suspense. See? It's got dinosaurs in it. It appeals to everyone's inner kindergartner. When you first learned about the Triceratops and thought it was the coolest thing in the world, even if the storyline stinks, you'll still be entertained by the spectacle of the dinosaurs in which we discussed are the real stars. The Jurassic Park movies are kind of the only movie franchises where you can just watch whatever happens happen. They make an obscene amount of money and it doesn't really matter if they stink or not because you really just want to see the dinosaurs. I'd imagine that's how the real Jurassic Park would go. You don't have to pick the film apart or ask yourself if you're being entertained or not because you are. There are killer dinosaurs on the loose. Plus, whenever you're sitting at a table and you don't really want to pay the check, you just got to look at them and say, Don't get cheap on me, Dodson. Thanks to the one guy who responded to the trivia contest. I want a divorce. Divorce? I knew we had something in common. Here, sign these. Here's your dollar. I pay my debts. I'm going to do another one, because why not? I will rock your body with big, nasty hooks. You'll be pissing blood out of your ass. That's horrible. You know the rules. First one to respond gets it. Tune in next time when I do another movie of my choosing at my leisure. Peace.